All right, go. We are briefing the case of Correlation for Equity and Excellence in Maryland Higher Education and Commission. And my name is Jessica Simon. Um, I'm Sanjay. Kayla So the parties, the plaintiffs and defendants, um, the alumni from Maryland for HBCUs, which are Bowie State University, Coffin State University, Morgan State University, and University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And the defendants are a variety of people from the Maryland Higher Education Commission and the state of Maryland. Um, these are the judges of the appellate court, um, Judge Catherine Blake and Judge Paul Brown. The trial court is based on the United States District Court, District of Maryland, and the location is in Baltimore, Maryland. And we briefed this case using Iraq, which is issue, um, which um, first, what are the key facts and issues? Issue, according to Afro.com, the U.S. Federal District Court determined that the state of Maryland continues to operate a DJR system of segregation in higher education that has disadvantaged HBCU students. Um, in 1974, the state of Maryland devised a plan to achieve black-white equity in higher education. About two years later, US, the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights informed the state of Maryland that the plan was not being publicly implemented, threatening to take away Maryland's share of federal funds. Um, the state of Maryland then filed a lawsuit against the OCR, the official the Office of Civil Rights, preventing them from holding federal funds. The legal battle went on until 1980, where there was a, ne a negotiated second dis dis segregation. segregation plan that was fun that was found insufficient as well. Another issue as well is the key facts and issues. In 1985, a third desegregation plan was agreed on. And in 2000, the state of Maryland and the OCR signed a partnership agreement to make its four historically black institutions comparable and competitive to TWS. Um, and then second is rules. What rules of law apply to the case? In 2006, the coalition filed an equity lawsuit stating that the state of Maryland violated HBU students' rights under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment. 2012, a liability trial was held. In 2013, the court ruled in favor of coalition for equity and excellence. One minute left. Um, 2013 to 2015, Judge Blake ordered the orders the orders to develop orders to orders to develop a remedy of the dis discriminatory pattern of academic program duplication that puts um, HBCUs at a disadvantage. In 2016, Judge Blake orders a correlation in states to return to court for trial in 2012 after the state of after the state of Maryland failed to submit a comprehensive plan to address program duplication of the remedial remedial plan. And in 2000, see for the conclusion, the ruling on October 7, 2013, was that Judge Blake ruled that Maryland has violated the constitutional rights of students at Maryland's four HBCUs by unnecessarily duplicating their programs at nearby white institutions. And on November 10th, Judge Blake held a telephonic status conference to address exhibits, witnesses, and outstanding pretrial matters. Do you have any questions? Um, while I do this, while I do this. <laughs> so, um, you, I, there were, I thought you said Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Uh, the typo? The source is used in it. It's said Title VII, right? Right, but it's listed as Title VI. What is Title VI of 19 Civil Rights Act? Oh, you said it's listed as Title VII. On your PowerPoint presentation. If you want to 
Um, and again, the uh, what is the jure? What is a de jure system of segregation or discrimination? So when I looked it up, um, pretty much it was saying like it has to do with segregation and it's practices that are legally recognized. So like for instance, um, people know of the system, but yet they're still like practicing it. Or so again, there's two types of discrimination. One is de facto discrimination, right? And the other is de jure discrimination. De jure the force of law. De jure has the force of law. De facto is what? Occurs when widespread individual purposes sometimes factor private pressure leads to separation. So basically, when people just they segregate themselves <clears throat> as a people, and then it, it's just backed by the fact that uh, companies and, and the rest of the Know, people that are in business and things like that just follow along with the suit. Right, so the jure discrimination is the one that's more injurious because you are basically paying for that discrimination because you're a taxpayer. Yeah. And you're paying for people to discriminate against you, right? All right, all right, good, good job. Um, so we gave you guys a... Um, 93 for team appearance. Substance uh, was pretty solid. You could have gotten better um, if you had put the name of the case at the beginning. Um, uh, again, any name of the case always has a what in the middle? Versus. Versus, exactly. Um, so again, you got a 90 for that. Group member submission was, was pretty decent. There were some stumbles in one of the uh, team members. Um, so you gotta make sure you guys review it um, before you come. Gave you a 90 for that. Um, the PowerPoint presentation was pretty solid. Gave you 95 for that. And the Q&A. Um, was um, was it, um, right? And timekeeper, make sure you give them like uh, time on the on the um, minute. So like say three minutes left, or you know. Yes, ma'am. So they have exactly. Um, the, good morning. My name is. Hold on, hold on, one second. Are you ready first? Timekeeper, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Sashawn McLean. I'm Tiana Gates. My name is Austin Parks. And we're doing the, the case briefing on the correlation of equity and excellence in Merlin Higher Education at all versus Merlin Higher Education Commission. So, originally filed, filed in 2006. This case was filed by the community-based group composed of alumni from Maryland for Historic Black University, which is Bowie State Coxon. Um, I'm sorry, that was group five, right? Yeah. This is group four? Yes. All right, great. My apologies. Thanks. Sarah, over, please. Time you can give, give them a good time. You got it again. <clears throat> good morning. My name is Shawnee Green. I'm Tiana Key. I'm Austin Parks. And we're in the case filed against the Coalition of Equity and Excellence in Maryland Higher Education at all versus Maryland Higher Education Commission, um, which was originally filed in 2006. This case was filed by the community based group composed of alumni from Maryland for historic. Black University, which is University of Maryland Eastern Shore, 
food space, Morgan space, and um, it was decided by the U.S. Federal District Court that the state of Maryland continue to operate in a de jure system of segregation in a higher education that has this advantage, HBCU students, a current court order is to develop a remedy plan to address unnecessary program duplication in Maryland public higher education system. This slide. Um, for the name of the parties involved, we have the, we have Bowie State Conference State Morgan UMES, and we also have the um, Maryland Higher Education Commission name of the trial court was the U.S. District Court of Maryland, and that was a mistake in the slide. In the name of the appellate judge, we considered the case was Catholic and Blake. The ruling was that in 2013, Judge Catherine E. Blake ruled in favor of the Maryland HBCU plaintiff. Judge Blake determined that Maryland does, does operate a de jure system of discrimination and a disadvantage HBCU student. On November 8, 2017, which this was actually out of the email that we got, Judge Blake issued an order which called to develop a remedial plan, and the plan is still being worked on. Two minutes. The remedial plan will propose new academic programs for Maryland's four HBCUs, the ones that we named, as well as financial support for marginal financial aid and recruitment for the next five to 10 years. Um. Anybody have any questions, first of all? Okay, um, so what was the uh, analysis? In the IRAC, we have I for what? R for what? And A for what? What in the book it says apply, but online it says analysis. So it, those are kind of used interchangeably. Okay. So what is the analysis of this particular case? A for analysis, you say. Yeah, what is the analysis? What is what is the analysis? Basically that the um, the system of well the <laughs> the historic black system have been under a de jure um, segregation system. And why is that a problem? Um, it's a problem because we're not getting enough funding like the other um, universities. And why is that a problem? It's enforced by law. It's, okay. And, 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 and that is a problem because of? If we're not getting enough funding, then we can't give um, the students that go to the historic black colleges the right amount of financial aid and um, other things that they need to learn. And it keeps us out of school. Right, okay. So the key issue is that when you have analysis, issue, first of all, to understand what the questions of the law are, right? And also the facts, right? The rules identify the actual laws that are it, that are uh, are critical, right? The analysis is when you apply the facts to the what? To the law, right? Facts of the case to the law. So what was missing from that analysis and was missing here from your presentation is the application of the law. Identify what the law was, right? Which was what? No. What is the law that is at issue here? It was identified in the last presentation. The law, there were two, two um, bodies of law. What was the first one? The 14th Amendment. 14th Amendment was one, and the second was what? Um, last six, group? Title VI. Title what? Seven, title seven. Seven. Title seven. Well, lose another point. Title seven. <laughs> title seven. Title VII, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, all right? So you have to apply, again, the law to your facts. And that's what, again, allows you to, to present what the conclusion is, all right? So again, in any case brief, you wanna make sure you follow that pattern. I mean, you know, again, generally, you guys were in the ballpark, um, but you, um, you know, again, um, had um, some key uh, 
information that was uh, that was missing, and um, and, and therefore you um, could have gotten a better uh, score uh, had that information been um, been there. And um, but nevertheless, you still got a decent score. You know, parents of 95, substance 85, movement participation is 90, PowerPoint presentation 80, 85, Q&A um, gave you 83 for a combined score of 87.6, all right? Take care. All right, we're gonna, get, we're gonna stay on, 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 uh, on schedule, so uh, with that time, you can make sure we're with three. Go ahead, Madam Keeper, Townkeeper, let's start. Right. Go ahead, Mr. David Ocean. Lionel, don't you with us? Yeah, I'll take over. Okay, and so right here, <laughs> we are presenting the case. Of, uh, next slide, please. The Coalition for Equality and Excellence in Maryland Higher Education versus the Maryland Higher Education Commission. All right, so the case was originally filed in Maryland State Court before it was refiled in the federal district courts. And so it was uh, basically the case was for uh, historically black institutions um, to be able to receive the adequate amount of funding that were being provided to uh, predominantly white institutions, or traditionally white institutions. Um, The name of the appellate court judge that considered the case was Judge Catherine E. Blake. In her own opinion, students who entered Maryland historical black institution, whether black, white, or other race, did, do not have an equal educational opportunity as those students who attend a state traditionally white institution, institutions, she wrote in her own opinion. The timeline, so this is basically what started back in 1979. It was a 74 to um, 1982. These were other um, lawsuits that was filed. There was also one in 1974, which I just said, and it continued to 1985. And in 2000, a partnership was agreed. And in 2006, the HB, HB CU also, also filed another lawsuit, and in 2012, the lawsuit was also was also filed. In 2013, um, court rules in favor of coalition of equity excellence. Judge Catherine E. Blake rules in favor of the HBCU plaintiff, determining that Merlin continues to operate the a de jure system of discrimination against HBCU. Um, the 2013-2015 mediation is ordered by the court. Uh, Judge E. Blake ordered the parties, HBCU plaintiffs, and the state of Maryland to develop a remedy, a discriminatory, discriminatory pattern of academic program duplication and put HBCU to the disadvantage. 2016, uh, Blake sets court date for remedy for remedial trial December 2016. Judge Blake ordered the coalition and state to return to court for trial in 2017 after mediation fails. 2017 witnesses for the remedial portion of the HBC lawsuit include testimony in February 2017 and in March 2017. The Merlin legislative black package to introduce SB 712, which guarantees equity in funding for Merlin's HBCUs. All right, so uh, the remedy in summary, the court finds that neither party's remedy as currently proposed is practical. It, yeah, practicable, educationally sound and sufficient to address segreg segregative harm of public duplication in historically black institutions. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> okay, 
Um, so what is your, uh, what was the issue? Correct the presentation. What was the issue? <laughs> what was the issue? The issue is that. The, uh, Where was it in the presentation? Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't visible to me in the presentation. How about the rule? I stated it. Where is the rule? The rule. About the analysis. I said the analysis. I'm asking you, what was the analysis? Was that the uh, HBCUs weren't having funding because it was, and it was against the law. Because you said the HBCUs weren't doing what? They weren't. They weren't allowed the same amount of funding and programs that traditionally white institutions were being. Uh, and it was against what law? It was against the civil rights. And, uh, it was against what law? Civil rights. Well, it's against the Fourteenth Amendment and civil rights. Civil rights law. What? Title seven. Title seven of what? Civil rights. Title. It's actually Title Six. Title Six is prohibits discrimination on the basis right. of race, okay, so color, Title six is or federal funding. All right. of, of what? Of what? What civil rights act? All right, 1964. Okay, that's why All right, guys, look. Um, Next group uh, is up, but let me, let me give you your feedback here. The team of parents could have definitely been better. You only had one person with a suit on. Um, so we gave you 75 for that. Substance, it was some good substance actually. You brought out more facts in this um, presentation, even though it wasn't really, um, you didn't, you didn't really excuse me finish. You brought out <laughs> more facts in your presentation than really even the uh, previous groups did. Right, so you got a, um, you actually got a 90 for, for, for that. Um, but again, you you missed the key elements of the IRAP, right, which was the, the main um, guidance that was given to you all to set it up in that way. Uh, but again, your, your, your substance, you got a lot of good information uh, on it. Your uh, group member participation could have been better if had you reviewed the presentation before because you were stumbling throughout the presentation. So you didn't necessarily, it, it just showed that you could have prepared a little bit better. And the PowerPoint presentation, while you had a lot of good information, it wasn't really you know, kind of formatted in a, um, you know, as, as nice a way as uh, the first group that presented was. So uh, again, we gave you an 80 for that in your Q&A. Um, again, it was also uh, challenged by the fact that um, you didn't have a clear understanding about the IRAC um, formula. So overall, that gave you guys a, uh, an 80, all right? But good job necessarily on getting some of those, um, that, those facts that other people didn't get. Next group, quickly, let's go. Title 
six of the Civil Rights of Act of 1964 and the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. This case is about bringing long overdue racial equity to students enrolled at HBCUs. And for the perspective, students not yet enrolled in those schools who are seeking access to equal educational opportunities. <coughs> so we're ruling in October 2013, District Court, um, Judge Blake ruled in favor for the Coalition of Equity and Excellence in Maryland Higher Education, saying that Maryland had violated the U.S. Constitution by frustrating the segregated higher education system, though by perpetrating perpetrating the segregated higher education system through the practice of I'm sorry, not perpetuating. That's perpetuating. Perpetuating. <laughs> perpetuating. <laughs> On November 8, 2017, the court issued a memorandum opinion and order in the um, Coalition for Equity and Excellence in Maryland Higher, Higher Education versus the Maryland Higher Education Commission. The order status started out by stating, you know, it is hereby ordered, adjourned, and decreed that the defendants are hereby adjudged. Judge, a judge, yeah, and decree that the defendants are hereby primarily enjoined and restrained from maintaining vestiges of prior de jure system of segregation in the form of unnecessary programs, duplication, and the public higher education system in the state of Maryland. <coughs> and that's all I'm going to say. Does anybody have any questions? So, um, uh, the it was this a a ruling at law, or was this a ruling uh, in equity? The ruling of, of law. The law. What was uh, what was the distinction that we made? in the lecture this past week between rulings at law and rulings in equity. Well, Mr. Muslim. Oh, Anybody know, remember the difference between the ruling at law and the ruling at equity? Rulings at equity were remedies. But what kind of remedies? What kind of remedies in equity? What, what was the difference between the remedies in equity and the remedies at law? Remedies at law are like monetary. And remedies in equity are what? I don't remember that. Remedies in equity are what? I'm trying to buy the equity court. And what, what are they? Remember that? that, that and an injunction. And so what is this? What is it? What is specifically, Miss Miss Hall? What what did you say? Okay, so what which which type is this? Because it's a what? What is the what does the ruling say? What is the word key word? Because. Because of word of what word? What was the word in that ruling? Enjoin. Enjoin. When somebody is enjoined, that means that there's an injunction in place. All right? So again, you gotta be able to connect what we've talked about in class to what is actually being you know, presented. You right? So that's the key um, the key issue. So again, uh, group two, your team appearance was um, you only had two people, right? So all, all you had to do is have two people who came dressed. It would have been able to get maximum points, but um, you didn't uh, do that. And the one thing I want to say is I understand that some uh, times that people don't have, you know, um, maybe a shirt and tie and, cl and clothes like that. Uh, when we were in college, when we, you know, knew that we had to do something, and somebody loaned, you know, the other person whatever they needed in order to, you know, basically make sure that they were, you know, together for that presentation, right? So that, again, um, is a, again, that's the reason why we created these groups, so you all could help out each other. 
And that means kind of coming together before, you know, you get together and say, hey, okay, are we going to be able to get these, you know, these presentation points? You got this together, you got that, you know what I mean? So that's one of the things that I want to um, stress to you. Substantively, you did have the IRAC, um, you know, concept in place, although, you know, um, it was a, uh, um, you know, the uh, information wasn't as, as tight as I would have liked to have it. Um, but nevertheless, we, we'll, we'll give you, um, so again, T and parents, I'm sorry, you got um, 75 of that, a 90 for substance. Group member participation was uh, decent, um, but you, you can kind of stumbled a little bit, um, could have better 85. Um, the, um, the PowerPoint presentation was also uh, a little difficult to read in some parts. Um, could have been better, so I gave you 85 of that. And uh, the Q&A, you know, there was key issues that um, we weren't able to to get. So overall, you got an 83, all right? But good job on the um, making sure that you got the IRAC formula together. Hey, Brian. You're familiar with Career Day? Or you... Yes. Okay, good. All right, you guys ready? Next, next group? Uh, professor, I gotta go. Are you? Are you yes. Yeah. All right, can somebody take over? Do you, you have the next class? Can you give the screen? Ms. Hall, can you get the time for us? Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. All right, go for it. So, my name is Brian Hassan. I'm here with Sydney Hall and Jessica Smerry. And today we're presenting a case on um, the Coalition for Equity and Excellence in Maryland Higher Education um, versus the Maryland Higher Education Commission. So, the background um, basically, um, there was a coalition formed in the state of Maryland from um, alumni of the, the four agencies in Maryland, namely Cotton State, Bowie State, Morgan State, and Richmond on the Eastern Shore um, against the University, against um, the state of Maryland because of unfair um, financial advances compared to people's lives. Coalition for Equity and Excellence in Maryland, Higher Education, the State of Maryland Higher Education Commission of the state, alleging violations of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, equal protection of the 14th Amendment of the 2000 Partnership Maryland Times with the federal government to make the HBCUs competitive and comparable to the other lives. unnecessary duplication of academic programs, expand mission and program uniqueness and institutional identity of the HBCUs requiring both the enhancement of existing program offerings at the HBCUs and development of new high demand programs, develop pro programmatic, programmatic mix of areas of excellence in two or more high demand clusters within three to four years, transfer specific programs from PWIs to HBCUs, 
and merge specific programs and institutions who are essential to effectively meet these same desegregation obligations. Mm -hmm. yeah. any, uh, any questions? So tell me about the analysis of this case. So basically, um, the, the whole case started way back in 1974, uh, but it wasn't really, the lawsuit wasn't really filed until 2006. Um, was filed, um, I believe. I don't remember the exact year, but the um, judge, Judge Blake, ordered the two um, parties, the alumni and the state of Maryland, to present remedies. But the state of Maryland failed to present the remedies while the plaintiffs did provide the remedies, which I believe is more of a reason why, an additional reason why um, she ruled in the favor of the plaintiffs. Anybody else have anything else to add? Okay, so again, when I say what is the analysis, the key thing that you want to give me is a connection between the facts of the case, and you gave me some, some decent facts, or at least, you know, some facts, with the rule, all right? So as we stated before, the facts are that uh, Maryland has historically uh, underfunded uh, and, and equitably funded historically black colleges and universities, right? That was in violation of what law? Title VI Act of 1964. Title VI of what? Title VI of what? The civil rights. Of the civil rights what? Civil rights Act of 1964. Of the, exactly, no, again, what you said was incomplete. So you need to, again, each statement, each, you know, again, word in that description is key and operative, right? So you say Title VI of what? Title, there's many laws, you uh, uh, and so you can be Title VI of many laws, you know, title of civil rights. Well, there's no, there's no act called the Civil Rights. It's Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, but there's Civil Rights Acts of multiple years, right? So you can't just say of the Civil Rights Act, right? So you have to say Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, right? That's one law. What's the second law, Ms. Hall? Ms. Murray? the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Exactly, right? So that's the, that's the analysis. That's the analysis. So anytime you give uh, a case brief, you wanna make sure that you have that. But nevertheless, um, in terms of group of parents, uh, everybody came uh, dressed for the presentation. Um, you know, it would be good when you go in and give presentations, especially if you're doing it competitively, you don't wanna have coats on, all right? You wanna have sh shirt and tie, you know, um, but you don't want to wear, wear coats, generally speaking. Um, but nevertheless, everybody had, uh, had uh, you know, dress appearance, so it gave you 93 for that. Substantively, um, 